All right. In this video, I want to talk about the year Jesus was crucified. Because this is very important. As the apostles talked about living in the last days. Now, the Old English, when it says plural of something without giving a number, it is generally a shortenized version of saying two. Kind of like you would say couldn't instead of could not, or can't instead of cannot, or something along those lines. You abbreviate something. Well, the same thing as when you say something like a day passed, or you could say days passed. You may think, well, how many days? Well, if there's not a number, you can say two, because it's just basically abbreviated way of saying two without having to put the extra breath into the uh, into the, the lungs to say it or the extra ink to write it out, right? That's why you can read in Daniel chapter 12 and Revelation chapter 12 about a time, times, and a dividing of time where times is generally thought, thought of as a year. Uh, it can be a, a actual cycle of appointed times, the feast days. So you have one year, two years, and a half a year. Time, times, and half a time. So a dividing of time would be half. You generally divide something evenly, unless otherwise stated. You just slice that in half. So when they say we're living in the last days, and Peter says that a day with the Lord is as a thousand years, well, you know what they mean, that the last days is the last 2,000 years. As 4,000 years of history have already passed, there's only two days left, or 2,000 years left, until the seventh day, the seventh set of a thousand years, the millennial reign of Christ as king in Jerusalem. This is what we can see from the creation week. The six days, 6,000 years, and then the seventh day Sabbath, the thousand year millennial reign of Jesus here on earth. So if we can really narrow down the year Jesus was crucified, we can figure this out. You see, in Daniel's 70 weeks, we're told about 62 weeks and then seven weeks and the G and then the Messiah shows up. He's going to be cut off, but not for himself. And then there's one more week. So we see that when Jesus started his ministry, he said that he's going to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That he's anointed to do so. And that acceptable year is probably pointing to the feast days, the acceptable feasts. Right? He's going to proclaim that. And he started that at the start of the year. Abib or Aviv, the first month of the Jewish year. Uh, the, the month of the Passover. He started to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. But it stops short. He only gets halfway through. There's still three more feasts to be finished, and that is trumpets, atonement, and tabernacles. He was crucified on Passover, in the grave for unleavened bread, rose on first fruits. Presented the, the first fruits on Shavuot and poured out the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. We're just missing trumpets, atonement, and tabernacles. Right? So, yeah. Uh, he pretty much did the, was anointed to, to do just what he said he was going to do. But he's cut off. And there was a seven year period that was supposed to come in that was actually cut off and delayed. 
You see, Jesus was supposed to be accepted as king, but he's rejected. Because during the beginning of this year where he was crucified, he came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey and was proclaimed king. They hailed him as king. Hosanna in the highest. But the religious leadership ended up rejecting him and putting him to death with the help of the Romans. So from that time, we get an idea that, hey, he was preaching the acceptable year of the Lord that still needs to be finished. So if we can find out the year he was crucified, we can go, okay, this is the last days. So this 2,000 year period has been a grace period because when Jesus came to be a king, he was basically going to establish the millennial reign. He was going to reign as king, but they rejected him. So there's a grace period before he's actually going to do it. Right? So, again, if we can just narrow down when this was, we get an idea that, all right, this is when he ought to return. Now, this might mean that this is at the end of the seven years, at the end of Daniel's 70 weeks. Or it could mean something connected to that that we just need to look into and think about. And while looking into this to try to find the exact date that Jesus was crucified, I came across uh, dates as early as 28 AD, and they had some reasoning to back it up. Usually it's historical stuff. And then as latest I've seen is 34 AD. Right? Uh, and again, what backs it up is some historical claims, usually having to do with senses, going on at the time having to do with uh, when they think John the Baptist was born, when he started his ministry, when they think Jesus was baptized. Some historical things, and there's some evidence to that, but when it comes to historical things, it's hard to pinpoint an exact year and to make sure when it happened, because things change. And after 2,000 years, the records are a bit distorted, right? So this, it's not super reliable. So we get this vague view of somewhere between 28 AD and 34 AD, right? And then you would think 2,000 years from that, well, that's between 20, 28 and 2034, roughly, right? 2,000 years later. Makes perfect sense. All right. But... When we look into this, we can narrow things down a little bit better. And what made me want to do this video is I saw a short clip from a fellow talking about how uh, people were looking at 70 AD, the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, as a repeat of what happened with Moses, where the people basically murmured and everything and brought bad reports. So God was like, okay, you're going to wander in the wilderness for 40 years until that generation that has done the wickedness is destroyed. Right? They die. So then uh, they take a look at that and the person was saying, well, they only went and wandered for 38 years. So if you go to 70 AD and you minus 38, it brings you to the 32 AD. Keep in mind that this person already has a belief that that's when it happened, is 32 AD. And I was like, okay, but you, you forget that they actually already wandered in the wilderness for two years already. Right? So, yeah, it's still 40 years. Not to mention, people who are saying that, hey, 40 years before 70 AD is 30 AD, they're saying this because of Jewish records talking about how for 40 years before the temple was destroyed, strange things were going on in the temple. A lot of weird things going on. So if you go, hey, when did that start? 40 years before 70 AD. That was in 30 AD. 
So that's probably when Jesus was crucified, right? So you have a witness there from unbelievers, Jews who don't believe in Jesus as the Messiah or as their king, right? So that's one witness, but there's actually others. And I wanted to talk about that right here. And I think these witnesses are, I would say, infallible. Historical writings and the records, since we can't, can't be sure that they were kept perfectly for the last 2,000 years, we couldn't say that that's infallible. I mean, we can use that to get an idea, but we can't state anything. That's why we have a, a gap of about seven years or so, 28 A.D. to 34 A.D. Is that seven years? 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, about six years. Oh, so close. So, uh, it, again, that's not something to, to rely on, but some infallible evidence would be God's calendar, where we're told in Genesis that he has, uses the sun, moon, and stars to tell us times and seasons. And we know when the star of Bethlehem, Bethlehem appeared, the wise men of the east came to Israel, to Jerusalem, to meet the king, to meet the Messiah. Even though he would be just a, a baby or a child, they wanted to, to come. And when we actually use a program like Stellarium, you can go back and you'll see that in 3 BC, that's when the star of Bethlehem appeared. So there you get a date showing, hey, okay, so 33 and a half years, because that's how long Jesus lived. That brings us to 30 AD. So we have another witness. But here I want to show an article that gives us a third witness, also from the heavens. There's a little bit with it before I actually get to it, but you check this out here. Uh, this person wanted to prove that the crucifixion was in 30 AD, and I was like, all right, I'll, I'll hear you out. What do you got? Okay, they bring up a first point here, saying, year of birth, we know from Scripture that Jesus is born at the time of the first Roman census, when Cornelius was governor of Syria. A review of Roman documents describes this time frame as late as October or November of 5 BC. Now, keep in mind that the census, they can't just do that in a couple of days. It takes time. So they're doing the census, 3 BC, it can be around the time of that census. Okay, makes some sense. Goes on to say, we know that the second census, 10 years later, was in 6 AD at the same time of the year when Caesar Augustus ruled. Okay. That's some historical evidence. Again, like I was saying, historical things, good, but you can't really use it to solidify things. But let's check out what else this, it says here. Year of baptism. The birth date above would mean that Jesus was 12 years old at Passover in AD uh, 9 AD, as described in Luke 2. From these two dates, dated events, we can determine that Jesus is about 33 and a half years old, 21 years later at Passover in 30 AD. This is consistent with the baptism of Jesus in August or September of 26 AD in the fifth year of Tiberius, Luke 3, whose reign began in July of 11 AD. This is followed by a public ministry lasting a little over three and a half years, ending on Passover in 30 AD. All right, seems to line up, but here is the good one. This is one you can look up because it's very important, very important. We can read this about this event in the, the Gospels, a very strange event, because the Passover is on a full moon, right? So the sun and the moon are on opposite sides of the sky, roughly, right? Yet it says that there was a blotting out of the sun, basically a solar eclipse that lasted three hours. But 
it wasn't a solar eclipse because the moon was there visible on the other side of the sky, a full moon. That's basically what this is talking about. And this event you can find happened in recorded uh, using Stellarium. Uh, you can use uh, the historical records, like I think is used here, that this happened in 30 AD. There's even records from China. I saw a very interesting one that the, the sun was darkened, and they knew that uh, the sinless one saved the world. Uh, paraphrasing what they said. Uh, something very amazing. I thought that was pretty cool. And I think it was coming from the... Uh, I don't know if they call them emperors in China, but basically the emperor of China or their leader, their king or what have you. So this is kind of interesting. Interesting stuff there. And uh, I had somebody, the same one, talking about the 32 AD crucifixion because of the 38 years in the wilderness. And they were saying in 32 AD is when there was that uh, lunar eclipse, basically the blood uh, moon or darkened moon. But the Gospels doesn't talk about the moon being darkened or turning the blood at the crucifixion. It talks, it talks about the sun being darkened. All right, it's a very mysterious event that nobody can explain. Right? So, yeah, you look into this, uh, you seems to point to 30 AD when this happened. So when we take that into consideration, the evidence from what I see, outside of some historical evidence, not going to lie, there's historical evidence that people use to point to 28 AD and some as far as 34 AD. But I wouldn't count that as reliable as God's calendar, where he shows times and seasons through the sun, moon, and stars. So using that, uh, it seems to be pointing right to 30 AD. But maybe I'm seeing things wrong. Maybe I'm just wanting it to be 30 AD. If you got some things to show that shows that what I'm saying is off, it's wrong, share it with me. You've got some more hardcore evidence that it's not at 30 AD. Share that. Uh, I'm willing to hear it. What matters is the truth. And uh, what I'm sharing here is not something that's dogmatic, where it's set in stone, where I know this is the truth. Because uh, maybe there's something off with Stellarium that you know about, that really this is a different time when the star Bethlehem was there. Or... With the sun being darkened during a full moon and different things like this uh, maybe you you have things that point to a different time cool share it but it seems as though it's 30 a.d and that means 2000 years later the last days end roughly 2030 which is about seven years away which would mean Jesus might finish the acceptable year with this coming Feast of Trumpets, which is a few days away. Something to look up for. Because our redemption is a lot closer than when we first believed. But at the same time, hey, could be off. Could be off a couple of years. Uh, maybe... 2030 is the start of the seven-year time of Jacob's trouble, a great tribulation. Maybe that's how it is. So, just something to think about, something to get your hopes up, but uh, at the same time, you know, keep on trucking. I was thinking I was going to start my videos, especially if we're not taking... In a rapture, this feast of trumpets, I was going to start doing videos saying, and we're still here. Because uh, I check out Barry Oz videos and he's like, and we're back. I was like, what do you mean we're back? We didn't leave. <laughs> you should say, and we're still here. 
So I was thinking, you know what, I'll do that. I'll do that. Every time the feast goes by and we're still hey, still here, that's what I'll, I'll do my video. So it would be funny. But, uh, yeah. That being said, thanks for watching. Take care. All right, here's the three verses that I like to put in all the videos here. Isaiah 34, 16, seek ye out the book of the Lord and read so that Jesus doesn't tell you what he tells the Sadducees here in Matthew 22, 29. Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures. It's not that you err in error because you don't know the, the one true church that happens to be your denomination or that you don't know your, the, the fundamental beliefs or the Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed or whatever creed, or that you don't know the magisterium or the clergy or you don't know your favorite pastor or priest, that's why you're in error. No, you're in error because you don't know the scriptures. You need the scriptures to test to see whether or not those are correct, whether those are the right traditions, whether those are legitimate clergy, whether that church is actually following God, and whether those creeds line up. Those fundamental beliefs are found in the scriptures because... Knowing the scriptures is knowing God. Like we read here in John 17, 3, Jesus says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And this is a deep knowing. As Adam knew Eve and she conceived, you need to know God in like manner, so that you may be born again, that his word, his seed, it abides in your heart. Will you truly believe that Jesus Christ it's God in the flesh that he died in your place and gives you his life in exchange so that your righteousness, your good and your bad, your life, past, present, and future, died 2,000 years ago. Your life is his. He can do what he wants with it. He puts it to death, and he gives you his life in exchange, his perfect, eternal life. That's the deep knowing you need to know of God. So... There you go. Do you know him? Do you want to know him? You get to know him. Thanks again for watching. Take care. That fella couldn't join the church. He couldn't join the church. He couldn't get baptized. He couldn't get baptized. He woke up with God. He woke up with the devil. Are you saved? So that fella didn't take the sacraments, didn't take the sacraments. Didn't say the rosary, didn't take the rosary. Didn't tithe, didn't tithe. He went to heaven, he went to hell. You say? Didn't keep the law, he didn't keep the law. He broke the commandments, he broke the commandments. He didn't keep the golden rule, he didn't keep the golden rule. He woke up in glory, he woke up in the pit. Are you saved? You're saved. If you're not saved, you're over here or you're over here. You sure ain't in the middle. He said, Lord, remember me, thou comest thy kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and said, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be saved. It's like that. You have been saved? If you ever saved, you were saved like that.